Good virtual Jackson Hole, everybody. Hi, Alexander Hugo. So everyone waiting with bated breath. Everyone doing okay? Hi, Laura. So just a little heads up here, we could have a three drive to a top here in S&Ps with one more marginal high. As NASDAQ started to act a little weaker yesterday, uh, doesn't do as well with higher rates and they are higher again, approaching the first rally high here. So if we start, uh, it looks like we can make a move to 148. That's gonna be uh, a real big battleground. And if I wasn't expecting someday a little risk off, I'd say we could just blow to new highs up towards 2%. Okay, so that would imply that the end still has a chance to break out. It, you know, look at this short term, hello arena. You know, uh, we've gone through this back over 1020. We should accelerate to new highs. This was a confirmed high here. Euro pulling back actually has a little bit of a potential negative candle here. Still think this rising wedge is valid. Now it's going to come in all the way down at 1685. I'd watch his 1730 level on the moving average. And if I was, uh, if you're long, be careful under here, back under these lows, because we could break to 1688, which is, you know, almost only about 20 below this. Euro GBP held where it had to at 40, which makes Euro the preferred long, which is being expressed in spades today with Euro down four and cable down th 30. Perhaps cable pulls back to this level, 36.70, maybe a 50 pip break to buy into it. And Gold is trying to roll over. Silver's weaker than gold today. So we'll see. Uh, we do have Patrick with us. Um, silver super cycle bull. So all you precious metal uh, people uh, that want to hear real bullish, uh, extremely bullish forecast for silver and gold, so stick around for Patrick today. Uh, he has some very interesting charts uses things like arcs and circles and uh, has a very bullish case for silver. And uh, oil's trying to pull back here. I would expect 65 might be an, an important support zone since it was a pivot for a false breakdown. Maybe it becomes support down here. You have a little bit of a pop in the VIX. VIX has really been wild for us to have these moves where you break out and you give it back. You break out, you give it back. Is, um, you know, a market topping with violence. So we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, yesterday, although the market was higher, uh, one of your most heavily, uh, your largest market cap stock uh, is Apple. So, so far, this looks like a failing rally in Apple. You know, we had this uh, breakout that was a false breakout. And the star was really Microsoft. And, you know, if it makes a new high now, it will not confirm. So I think it's a big uh, two, three days for the stock market. We'll see what happens here going into month's end. Any questions on any of the instruments you'd like to ask me? Watch Russell, it's trying to break out. He hasn't done it. He hasn't done it since April. 
You know, we haven't made a new high in Russell since April. It's trying. TLT. I think TLT looks uh, negative. Martin. You know, like we're rolling over and maybe we could get some acceleration. This is your daily here. Back under 146. Should open the door for 138 and a half. Hope that helps. Help you, Martin. Okay. So I believe it's uh, just Blake and I today. Man, it's been the Dale and Blake team all week. What's happening? Oh, yeah. How are you, man? <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm um, I'm good. I'm a little tired. Uh, we we had our my son's first uh, soccer or I'm sorry, guys, football match oh, last night. Yeah, and of the season. And uh, I was telling the guys and gals in the chat room it is the first time that um, well, you know, the kids are getting older, and so the games get later because yeah. you know they play the younger kids early, and then the older kids kind of play later in the day. And then the games are like longer. So the, the, the halves are extended um, and both happened last night. I was like, Oh my God, it's late. <laughs> By the time I got home, I was like, wow, I did not expect that. So yeah, it's um, it's beca they're becoming more and more like adults and treated as such. So it's, uh, yeah. it's interesting. So well, I'll look um, at a uh, uh, Bitcoin uh, did, did fail from up there. Yeah. You know, oh, you know, I forgot to show that to you yesterday. I'm sorry. I, you know, we got, caught up and talking a few about a few other things and uh and i forgot to um to mention that uh, to show you kind of what we were looking at with the ab i think C we did where it looked like uh, we could go to about forty thousand or so okay mm -hmm. oh the triangle all right no 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 no. um the this the oh a b c d yeah yeah so i mean it just it, it was a com just a completion move i'm not you know, thoroughly convinced that it's going down yet. Here, I, I'll, I'll actually remove this just to kind of get it out of the way. I had it more on a, oh, shoot. I don't know why I just deleted. Oh, man, I just deleted my 50-day moving average. Hold on. Sorry, I hate when me, I do that. I know. Let me let me put that sucker back on because I don't do moving averages that often. So I just kind of leave them on there. So just, uh, oh, gosh. Uh, here we go. Indicators. Uh, moving average. Oops. I just put in two. Okay, sorry. Let me adjust that. Uh, so how are you doing today, Dale? This is how I am. Is this an imitation? How you're doing? No, I mean, you know, what you're doing right here, you know. Oh, oh, it. oh, yeah. You know, it's funny. I can, <laughs> a lot of, uh, here we go. It's like, um, and I'm on top of it. I'm like, I'm like really, really tired today. <laughs> Which isn't good. Bless you. It, since this is the Thank first you. day of the uh, first day of uh, Jackson Hole, you know the thing about Jackson Hole, and I'm gonna I want to point out something really quick when I um, let me just adjust the the colors here. There we go. I just kind of wanted to adjust everything back to where it was. And why did oh 50 day? Sorry. All right, here we go. Sorry, I'm back. All right, so there's your 50 and 200. And I, and I keep that up. The reason why I keep the, the 50, 200 day moving average up is I, you know, I want to make sure I'm looking at, you know, the, the, uh, there, there's still like some of the, some of the moving averages that I, I really, really pay close attention to. And that would be like the 200 day moving average and the 50 day moving average. I'll put on a 50, 55 EMA every once in a while there as well. But notice that the 200 day moving average is really, um, you know, coming in as support here. And so that, that like, you know, in, in, in the, in Bitcoin, that's important because it's actually, it's actually affected the market a little bit uh, from time to time, you know, and, and it tends to, tends to be more uh, important for a lot, for a lot of different instruments. But one of the things I really wanted to talk about today, especially ahead of Jackson hole is this move higher that we've seen in yields across the curve too. And um, look at the 10 year, you know, specifically uh, as we're breaking higher out of, you know, a consolidation, you can actually see it in the 10 year uh, in the bond market here. And we drop below the 38% retracement. And that 
has to be getting some people's attention. And what we're seeing it um, reflected in is like the yen. You see the dollar yen's breaking above the 110 level. Uh, and that's, you know, that's pretty important. And I think what that's really suggesting to us, um, you know, following Jackson Hole is, um, is, is, is uh, telling us that, you know, yields are going higher but that means that the the Jackson Hole, the what the market's expecting out of Jackson Hole is probably, um, you know, just keeping the market in line with a possible taper that we're going to see at you know in in 2021. So it's not going it, to, it's now going to be looking at you know how much of a taper are we going to be expecting into this into the end of the year, and it's. You know, I think that's what that's what the Jackson Hole Symposium is going to be giving us, and I and I'm I'm wondering if we're going to see any response out of the market since we've seen is when I say out of the market I should say out of the currency market since we've seen such a big dollar pullback in the um, over the course of last uh, the last couple of days, you know, and and one of the things I I think one of the risks surrounding the dollar right now. Is the possible false breakout that we saw at the end of last week? You know, we saw the dollar, you know, break out, and then at the end of the week, we closed at the breakout point. But you know, we've we've given that back since the beginning of the week. The dollar is going to be really interesting to see how we close this week. I, I can't imagine that we're going to close in breakout territory, but whether we close higher from where we're currently at or lower is to be seen. Um, and one of the things that you know, if you're talking about bonds and the bond market is obviously looking pretty weak right now and and you know there's the 10 year and you can see it's it's breaking lower and here's your 30 year um you know about ready to you know break below the uh the 200 day and the 50 day moving averages by the way uh you know yields are going higher and this is one of the things that i think stelios has mentioned for the last Oh God, I don't know how long he's been, he was, he's been talking about this pretty much all of 2021. Uh, he's like, you know, stocks aren't going to go down until we start to see yields really rally. So if the market starts anticipating that the Fed is going to, you know, if the, if the Fed's going to taper and rates are going to indeed go higher, are we going to see a taper tantrum, if you will? Are we going to see higher rates? across the curve too, you know, I mean, you look at the five year, the five years, you know, testing the highs from, from, you know, a couple of uh, weeks back, here's the 10 year, you know, we're getting close 30 year. I mean, across the curve, we're starting to see rates move higher. So if they do continue higher in anticipation of, of the fed actually tightening, what happens to, well, the first question I have is what happens to, to stocks? Second question I have is what happens to, you know, yield sensitive currencies like the dollar yen? I mean, the dollar yen, I want to bring to your attention because it's actually threatening a breakout here of this triangle too. So you can see that the, it is mirroring, if you will, the, uh, the triangle pattern of the uh, tenure. Treasury, which you would expect because this is a uh, this is a very you know common uh, relationship. When the ten year starts to break out, you'll start to see the the uh, the dollar yen respond. But what's more interesting is what are other yen pairs going to do, and that's where that's where I'm a little hung up, and and I and I'm not really too sure what's going to happen. But I want to I want to share with you guys something really. I think it's been a big development for me over the over the course of the last couple of days uh, is the Euro yen. And I'm going to, I want to talk a little bit about the Euro yen because I've been on the short side of the Euro Euro yen for quite some time. And uh, I think, was it last week or two weeks ago? I'm sorry. Um, we were, we were in this triangle formation and the Euro yen broke down through the triangle and you can actually see it here. This will be a better, better view of it. Okay. And I'm going to, draw the upper end of this trend line here. So we'll just do that. Okay. You can see this triangle. It was, we were right up against channel resistance. I shorted the Euro yen at, um, I want to say it was 
45 or 50, somewhere around here before it actually broke. It broke lower, um, you know, played it, played it in the channel lower. I didn't make all this down here. I'm, I made a good chunk of it, but we, we saw a retrace back to the channel resistance this week. And I, um, I shorted it or this, this last week, excuse me. I shorted it as we, uh, uh, you know, hit the 618 retracement, the 129.10. I added a little bit to it. So my average was around 129. Anyway, yesterday it broke above that channel resistance and it, you know, I stopped myself out. I, I got out for like a 30 pip loss. I took a loss there, but th th that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is it, it broke this channel that we've been in for the last couple of, uh, last couple of months and with yields going higher, you know, I, 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 I do agree with Stelios going back to our previous conversation. I agree with him that, you know, as yields go higher, stocks are going to start to take notice. They're going to start to come down, but I'm not sure how to react to the rest of the yen pairs. And that, that's kind of got me thinking, um, you know, when usually I, I'm a, I, I can pretty much put my finger on, on what I want to do, why I'm doing it. Um, but in this case, I'm not really too sure how to react with these yen pairs. Like, am I going to be buying them because yields are breaking out or if stocks start to come down, are they still going to move higher? Because we haven't, we haven't seen that dynamic ever. It seems like, um, I want to, I want to also show you just something else with the Euro yen, which I found really important as I was, you know, deep diving in technicals because, um, let's go over to the, let's, I'm going to pull up a different feed of the Euro yen that I don't typically draw on. And this is one that I was actually making this point yesterday on the, um, the daily roundup. This is, uh, this is the Euro yen and, and this is a chart that I used earlier this year. And that's why you can see this verbiage here. I use this for a week ahead video and that I put those up. Um, you know, when I do a week ahead video, I'll, I'll capture a, you know, a, ch a longer term chart and I'll put some, you know, words on it. And so I, ha I hadn't looked at this chart in a while, but I did that obviously when we were breaking out of this triangle at some point, you know, so, you know, earlier this year, anyway, going back to this chart, what I found really interesting, this is a weekly chart and that's a 13 year trend line, right? You can see it here. That's a 13 year trend line. And we're actually pivoting off of that trend line, basically, you know, and, it, it, it really is. We've, we found support at that trend line. So when I look at this, and this is a weekly chart of the Euro yen, and then you see, okay, well, we got, you know, the 50% retracement of the last leg higher has held this longer term weekly chart has held. Then, you know, you're seeing this big bounce off the Euro yen and, and automatically I'm thinking, okay, well, I definitely don't want to be short it, you know, and I was short, remember I was short this week. So I'm looking at this longer term chart thinking, okay, I don't want to be shorted, but how about if stocks do roll over, yields go up, stocks do go down, you know, what am I going to do with the Euro yen at this point? But you know, the, the other important thing that I'm thinking with the Euro yen is it's one of the, one of the currency pairs that really has a lot of liquidity be, you know, behind it. So, you know, if the Euro yen continues to squeeze higher, it's going to start to prevent me from being too short the euro dollar. So anyway, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of moving parts with these cross rates, and the euro yen is one in particular that I'm I, I've you know been looking at the last couple of days, really because I got you know what really provoked me to 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 look at it is getting stopped out of my short for a loss, and kind of you know circling back and saying okay well you know okay, I got out of that. Now, do I want to revisit that idea? Oh, no, I don't. And then, you know, looking at the technicals, now you start thinking about what's happening with the cross rates and what's happening with yields and why it's moving. It does convolute the picture a little bit with the euro. And that's why, you know, I'm looking at the euro dollar thinking, shoot, I don't even know what I want to do with the euro at this moment. Um, you know, following the, um, the, uh, the Jackson Hole Symposium. I know what I want to do with other currencies, but the euro is kind of a it is it's becoming a little bit more of a question mark for me so anyway but i thought i'd bring up bring to your attention what's happening would you in, consider that a risk on pair what do you mean euro yen long going up 
Yeah, typically, yes. And and so that's, you know, again, this is this is one of those things. The Euro again, you know, you look at it, you know, we broke that channel. Um, yeah. It's had a bid basically since I got got myself out yesterday. Yeah, you know, I got myself out like right on this 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 big candle here. So like right here um, at I think one twenty nine yeah. thirty two or something. That's that's where I got out and and you know I'm I'm looking at it thinking okay well you know typically the euro yen is going to be stocks moving higher. You buy euro yen, you can buy Aussie yen, you know Canadian yen, whatever, what all the yen pairs, right? right. But if yields really start to rally and stocks go down as a result, which I believe, I really believe that's going to be the case. I I 100% agree with Stelios and his argument from like the last couple months. Yields go higher, stocks are going to go down. But what do yen pairs do? And that I don't know. It's going to be interesting to find out. Um, It it, it is going to be interesting to watch because, yeah, and I think that's- and the conflict with yields going higher when risk off begins might be the end of yields going higher. So, I mean, it, it, you know, if you really believe a, a correction's coming, it kind of could temper how high yields could go because, you know, uh, a risk off move is going to be uh, yields probably pausing their advance, right? True, but I, I want to say, you know, the bond market has been in a, the bond market's been in a bull market for they're, pretty they're much years. my whole, yeah, my whole career. Yeah. Um, one, one of my really good friends, uh, I, I, I've mentioned him before on this. Kevin uh, Ferry. No, no, no. Um, actually, I did. I've been chatting with Kevin uh, yeah. for another reason uh, over the course of the last couple of days, uh, because uh, we're going to celebrate a friend's 50th birthday party in, in Napa, uh, some point here in the next few months. Yeah. Believe me, it's not something I want to do at this moment, but you know, I've got, I've got like a thousand 50 year old birthdays that I've got to celebrate. It's like a bar mitzvah. (laughs) It it really is. Um, but anyway, uh, the, the, there's a, a friend of mine who made his whole, he's made his whole career on being a bond bull, right? Um, the last 27, 28 years, he, he's, uh, he, he actually as Dr. Dre's, uh, personal money manager, uh, one of, and, and he invested into, into beats before Dr. Dre sold it to Apple. So this is a, a, a friend of mine that I've known for, you know, 20 years. Anyway, he's a big bond guy. One of the, one of the you know top brokerage firms here in the U S and he's made his whole career on just being long bonds. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the bond market and I, I know bond guys have been saying this for the last couple of years, but what happens when, you know, yields actually start to move higher and we start to actually see, you know, I want to say yields normalize. I mean, I, you know, it's, it, 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 it almost seems like yesterday, uh, Dale, where you, you used to put your money in a savings account and actually get a return, right? I mean, what, I mean, it seems like it's yesterday, but then you take a step back and it's been, you know, it's 10 been years, t- at least 10 years. Yeah. Um, so what happens if the bond market actually, you know, really enters, you know, a, a bear market and we start to see yields move higher permanently, like moving forward? You know, I'm, I, it's, it's something that could really throw off the, you know, and I, and I understand what you're saying. You know, yields will be tempered if stocks start to come down because people will right. anticipate the Fed's going to. Yeah, but what happens if infl- yeah, I mean th- these inflationary pressures are real. You know, they they really are. And I think, you know, we've all we're starting to see the evidence that that you know, like the price pressures that you're seeing here are not I don't think they're going to reverse. You know, we we're going to see inflationary pressures build like they have, you know, over the last 12 months. Then they're going to moderate, not saying prices are going to come down, they're going to stick they're going to be sticky. Right. Yeah, you ever you ever hear uh, retail prices go up on a rocket ship and come down on a parachute? I'm sorry, what'd you say? I, I, I missed that. I was... uh, prices uh, go up on a rocket ship and come down on a parachute. Yeah, yeah. That, that I mean that that's probably <laughs> what what we're gonna see, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's it's been it's been some years since we've seen any really 
big inflationary pressures on, you know, day-to-day things. Um, you could, you could, you know, argue about healthcare and, and, you know, and, and, uh, well, all, you know, education and, you know, other things, but, you know, when you're talking about the day-to-day goods, um, I, I think that these pressures are here to stay and, and that, you know, may, may actually force the hand for the fed and other central banks to actually normalize rates, uh, you know, quite a bit. And, you know, as rates go up, obviously stocks will come down. And and again, that leads me back to the question is what do I do with all these yen pairs? Cause I, I typically, you know, I, I would be a seller uh, or a buyer of yen, um, seller of yen pairs in a risk off environment, but I don't know if I'm going to do that this time around. Um, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll, obviously I'll just trade what I see, but you know, what I see, like I look at the Euro yen, what I see right now is a bullish breakout. And, um, and, and I, you know, I'm like, man, maybe I was, you know, maybe I was right. Maybe I was just getting caught on the wrong side here, you know, being short, you know, getting out, taking a loss and saying, okay, well, maybe I just got squeezed out because, you know, that, that, that's what, uh, you know, the whole market was playing it on the short side, but then, you know, taking a look at the longer term chart, that the, the, the weekly, you know, trend line, you can really see it here. I have it in green. The reason why I have it in green is because when it broke above it, you know, back here in April, May, I'm like, okay, as we're, as long as we're above that green line, I, I need to be bullish. And then, you know, over the course of the last couple of weeks, we were, you know, tr- trading around it and, you know, that dip below the 200 day moving average back above it, you know, it scares me being on the short side now in the euro again. And I don't know, um, you know, again, it's now it's starting to influence how I'm going to trade the euro currencies in general, not just the euro yen, but the rest of the euro currencies. So, um, you know, just some just some food for thought there for you guys. Um, while you know we, and I probably confused a lot of you more than helped you today, <laughs> but I'm giving you something to think about, right? It's not uh, you know a lot of times you have to sit back and think why are these why are these assets moving that you're trading, and and what's the underlying reason for their moves? And um, you know the the that's those are the questions I've been asking like the last. 24, 48 hours, really. So, um, and like I said, in a, in a risk on or risk off environment, depending on what we see over the next couple of days, I, and, I, and I will say that, you know, with the Fed chairman tomorrow, we got inflation data, PCE data tomorrow morning, which is going to be what I feel market moving data about an hour and a half before the Fed chairman speaks, which is obviously what everybody's kind of waiting for at this point during this virtual event. Um, but how I approach what, what currencies I use as vehicles to trade tomorrow's, you know, events are, are actually shifting because of the conversations I've had with not only myself, you know, with other people for the last you know, 24 hours regarding these yen pairs, um, the way my approach in the market is going to be a little bit altered based on, you know, some of the, some of the underlying assets that are moving and, um, you know, that shift is important and it's, and, and we're going to continue to have those conversations, obviously in the Forex analytics community, but uh, for the rest of you guys, I just want to mention, um, please visit our webinar sponsors, uh, go visit Forex, uh, Forest Park FX, because they are um, our main sponsor of this webinar. Uh, they, if you're in the U S or in Europe, um, you know, you want to learn how to get Forex analytics for free, or how to uh, how to get paid with cashback rebates. Uh, visit Forest Park FX. Tell them that we sent you. Uh, open your accounts right through here. Uh, I'm I'm actually with my personal account. I'm now uh, private. My personal account. I'm starting to get cashback rebates, which is awesome. Haven't had that in years. So uh, email them right here, or you can chat with them on Skype. They they're the ones that actually address these address these um these methods of communication, but uh, between them, and then you can always contact Pepperstone Securities as well. So uh, Dale, I'm gonna gonna let you continue on with your your interview today. All right, you wanna watch the, uh, was there some important news coming in? Uh, you, you know what we have, you know, weekly unemployment claims. Let me just double check really quick. I'm, you know, since it, unless it's, unless it's a uh, uh, inflationary data, which we'll get yeah. some tomorrow, 
or uh, employment data or an interest rate decision, I'm really not too interested. But we have GDP okay. happening right now. Let's uh, yeah. let's take That's a look. A big number. Yeah, yeah. GDP might move move the needle a little bit. Hold on, let me. Uh, looks like uh, the dollar yen came under some pressure here. So Must where weak. Without Stelios here to to um, weekly jobless claims came in a little weak. Uh, There's GDP. GDP uh, a little weak as well. So the dollar yen came through one ten. Um, the euro is pushing higher. You got the Kiwi pressing higher. The Aussie is pressing higher a little bit. So the dollar is under a little bit of pressure um, following that following that news. But again, I think uh, what people are going to be watching, that's a one minute chart. It looks way more yeah. exaggerated on a 15 <laughs> when you're looking at a yeah. one minute chart, when, and, and especially when the market doesn't move at all overnight. So, and this has been one of the more quiet nights as everybody's waiting for tomorrow. So remember tomorrow's Jackson Hole. Um, I do expect the Fed chairman's just going to, you know, lead us down the path of believing that a taper is going to happen uh, this year. You know, we're just now, now we're just looking at, you know, what is the, what is the dollar amount or, you yeah. know, what are the, what are the specific numbers that we might be looking at? Um, but, you know, we, we should all be expecting a, a taper coming um, this year. I don't think anything's changed COVID or no COVID. So um, anyway, all right, Dale, enjoy. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, that uh, COVID has led to more people needing things let out than being tapered what do you what do you say that because uh, i i put on 10 pounds during the pandemic <laughs> so i need to you know, you're gonna so go visit you're gonna go visit the, I, uh, I, I don't need my clothes tapered right I, I get it, I get it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> thanks buddy all yeah. right have a great one and thank, thanks thanks right. have a great interview um thanks everybody and i'll see you guys uh i'll see you guys either in the chat rooms or on we're, we're also doing the um the morning edge morning where we edge. We'll, we'll do the bias chart here in about 45 minutes so i'll see you guys there for those of you that are in the forex analytics community see you then good, good hunting today blake thanks you too so uh the blake and uh, dale segment are over now and uh, it's my pleasure to bring on patrick kareem and Patrick, I'm going to ask you to uh, unmute, share your screen, and welcome back to Face, buddy. Hey, hi, Dale. Hi, Patrick. How are you? I'm doing great, man. All so right. So happy to, to to be back uh, on the this this world famous uh, show you guys have there. It was, it was so much <laughs> fun listening famous. to 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 Blake there. Uh, uh, yeah. Talk charts there. It's uh, I should do this more often. Yeah. So yeah, pop in anytime. You're always welcome. And uh, all right. So uh, a billion liability and gold adjusted for inflation. You know what I wanted to start off with? Uh, and uh, maybe we could go to uh, exactly what you're looking at. These look like point and figure charts here, Patrick. Uh, you guys have uh, bad charts, man, you and Kevin. So uh, that spike flash crash that we had a couple of Sundays ago. I know you guys use like uh, arcs and circles. Yeah. And I was wondering if, uh, you know, just a spike, even though it came back um, gold more than silver, did it affect your charts when it did that? Or it well, held right where it had to, even though it spiked? Okay, there it is. All right. That's what so it mine. gold. I yeah. Yeah, so it, it it all depends on your uh, on the time frame, right? So let's yeah. say I know right now because whenever you start a downtrend, what you start yeah. looking at the the power of the arc essentially it's just a visual representation of a downtrend, like uh, yeah. the arc going down, and then it's this like the cycle that happens all over and over, right? Then after that, uh, the tr the downtrend is less and less acute. It's starting to be a base, and then when you start hitting the the right hemisphere a few times. Eventually, that's like the beginning of a, an uptrend. So people, you could use a moving average. It would probably give you the same type of thing. But an arc, it's like just the, the, the mathematics of it, the, the, the symmetry. The, it measures really the energy in, the reverse symmetry move out. So that wick, actually, it never closed outside of the arc. 
that's what I was thinking. Well, you could adjust it any way you want, yeah. but uh, based upon what you had, uh, what were you thinking when it was cracking the arc? Um, you were probably asleep, but <laughs> when it was well, happening. Uh, on the smaller time frames, honestly, Dell, it's like uh, the smaller time frame, like with any trading, with any trading tools, it's less and less reliable, right? The, right. the patterns they they could over they get they could get overwhelmed by the hard time frames uh, uh, resistance hidden resistance so let's say like this is like the daily chart mm -hmm. and uh, but if I would have went on to the let's say the monthly chart I'm not even sure like do I have a we don't even we're not even starting to carve out a a right hemisphere yet. So let's say okay. I'm based on monthly closes. We haven't, uh, there's not enough time yet for to get to that side yeah. of the arc. Exactly. Does that imply we can move sideways for a while longer? Into exactly. The arc? Yeah, that's exactly okay. what it means. You can All move right. sideways, you can move down. So usually the, the angle, yeah, so we could have, haven't actually like, you're exactly right, like another month here, it could go up and then retest a little higher. So, and sometimes there's not even arcs. You want to have two touches of the right hemisphere to have a valid arc. And one of the most, like, uh, if I could zoom out, one of the most uh, popular arcs there that if you would have spotted it early, would have given you like a lot, a huge, huge, uh, it's this one here. I drew it really fast, but the left hemisphere, one, two, three, I could probably tighten right. it a little bit. Uh, a lot of touches. So you know yeah. that left hemisphere, it's perfectly uh well drawn out then you use your classical ta you put in a, a breakout line one touch two three a, a bounce like this candle it was like go all in the the low risk high reward is right here yeah. uh, dale yeah, right here I when remember the arc 1350 completes, yeah yeah when the arc completes it's, it's over like the arc's destiny has been fulfilled and you it's not time to, to try to enter here because what happens after an arc either a a um a handle or it, go, it does maybe a, a pull flag pull you don't know anymore what, what, what's happening at this stage right you're above all-time highs you don't know where people are going to want to sell right the people who bought in here they're going to want to take profits creating overhead resistance that you couldn't imagine was there so the low risk entry is here and now this is all this churn this uh and actually that looks like a, a descending bullish expanding wedge also forming right here which uh, we kind of had here and back in 2008. I've been looking at this a, a lot of times because a lot of people right now, they're wondering, is this a top? Is this what we had back in 2013, like 2011, 2013? That's like the biggest question. And uh, right now the price construct, I'm looking at different ways. Uh, it kind of looks like this uh, bullish continuation pattern, right? Even if it, it the price action goes down severely, it's still... Um, a bullish pattern as soon as it breaks out above its um, look a beautiful breakout retest and then shot away. And pretty much okay. that's how I see gold right now. Gold has to survive. It has to go close above this, this uh, line right here. And once it closes above and retests it for, where's for, that come for, in 1875 yeah. around 1880. Let's put in a, this is where we're going to judge. I think this is this is this is how we're going to judge the the gold bull market there. If it could really climb above this break line, and if it can yeah. close above this one, it's a good sign. But ultimately, you're not out of the woods until you you close above um, 1875. Because look at look at what happened on this stop here. It, yeah. it tried. So I think we're kind of in this rally here. We're going to try to go, but this yeah. this echo bubble high is not enough. So even if we close above 1900, uh, you still need to overtake these uh, these monthly defined highs there. So uh, hold your breath, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I'd okay. say if people are on the sidelines for gold. You have to wait it out. You have to wait. Just so like would here. you buy a pullback to 1750 right now? Uh, it looks like that's where the arc uh, might come in after the candle yeah. you have there on your monthly and uh, maybe you could go shorter term to see if 1750 40 means something uh that's what i was thinking is that uh you know uh, i didn't buy the washout uh i thought it was like 
you know, sometimes the market gets hit like that. It's like being in a car wreck and it's in shock and it has to, you know, kind of fill out, reset uh, that huge candle and gold rallied back and got it all back. Uh, uh, any feeling on the fact that the gold silver ratio has been rising again? I mean, only 23% from the high at 110, but we've had a nice little pop in the gold silver ratio. And I know that eventually you're looking for uh, outperformance from silver over gold. I'm wondering if this is a good spot to think about it or there could be more left on in it. So uh, what are you thinking? I see the chart there. Well, um, I'm always going to overlay it with, uh, with the DXY. Often okay. they both go up to, they go up at the same time. And uh, if, I didn't know that. Yeah, and even look, I could even add the 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 VIX. So the in risk on environments, uh, the, these three, the VIX, it's like the three horsemen. Well, I think it, it's supposed to be the four horsemen. But if the VIX, the DXY, and the gold silver ratio go up, it's super super clear. Uh, we, may, we might be close to a U.S. equity crash, something really scary. Yeah, we we had it here back in two thousand eight, when they all crescendoed together. We yeah. had it in March. I probably have to zoom in on the daily chart to see March. But no, if this COVID. is subdued, yeah. so if, if the gold silver ratio starts turning back down, we get a wick. If the goal, if the, the DXY, look at that. The DXY for me, it's just doing a back test of a, a critical breakdown line, right? One, two, three. Back yeah. test. If, if this, even if it comes and touches here, gold silver yeah. ratio comes up even a little bit more here. I think even there's a back test. It could even spike all the way up here yeah. and the VIX can spike up. But if that gets sold into and we start turning back down, that's going to be rocket fuel for precious metals. And even equities, they're going to, they're going to enjoy that. But on the turn off the bottoms, precious metals, they're going to, they're going to outperform uh, the US equities. They're pricing in all this uh, monetary imbalances or whatever, whatever was done there to subdue that, that VIX. But right now, the, it's, it's still a slippery slope. Okay. Uh, you know, Patrick, I know that you're really known because uh, you kind of broke out uh, with your super cycle work in silver. Uh, but I also know that you, you know, I've read you, you have some type of uh, uh, trading system that uh, you're also uh, implementing for your subscribers. Uh, does that include other instruments, asset classes like stock indexes? Are you doing that kind of work now? Yeah, it could be um, any, 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 any instrument. Uh, anything that moves, huh? Anything that moves. So that's the, it's like uh, based on the Stan Weinstein's stage analysis. So I don't know if okay. you had, uh, were you, were you checking a ticker in particular? We could. Uh... Well, like, you know, the S&Ps. Okay. What your look is like on NASDAQ or S&Ps with us at uh, new record highs. Do you have a, uh, a look so, on those? Yeah. Let's do a. Um, let's look at Apple. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I, I'm following it. So right now. It's like a would... three drive to me up here. <laughs> Uh, see the last three highs that's a, a three drive to a top formation possibly see that these ones yeah one two and now the last one is okay. three yeah okay. that one looks like a uh i even see a oh boy yeah looks bullish huh yeah especially if it breaks to the upside it, it should be violent so when these patterns okay. if they're not contained like even like those bearish um those bearish falling, uh, rising wedges, which usually should yeah. break to the downside. When they break yeah. upside, it's uh, you usually have some crazy action that goes up, up and throwovers. Uh, yeah, throwovers above wedges. Uh, it goes. Uh, so let's yeah. say here, I want to know if I want to go um, here. At the bottom is the Mansfield Welter Strength Indicator. So as soon. As soon as you're outperforming, so let's say Apple's outperforming the SPX, that's a very good sign. You want to be always in an instrument which is outperforming its um, its peers. If you're well, above do you consider that it is because it was late to the party while everything was else was rallying, um, and uh, there are a lot of things making new highs, S and P's themselves, and. Um, 
well on the, on your weekly chart yeah we're we're making new highs anyway i, I thought this might be a terminal uh the three drive to a top formation uh diverging on the last couple highs doesn't look it looks bullish to you though what well, would what uh would uh back under 140 change your mind on april on apple i think so check it so here it seems to be carving in a pull flag yeah so if that breaks to the upside yeah. should have a pretty violent move yeah under if it gets if it goes back if it goes back at 140 uh, yeah. then then this uh, this is in danger you're closing below the 10 week moving average and if ever it closes below the 30 week moving average then uh, you could be in trouble okay what am i seeing here yeah it's another rising uh yeah look at that rising falling right bearish rising yeah. wedge so eventually if that line breaks down the target is the beginning of the the pattern right. but if it breaks to the upside yeah you have the violent move up and then once everybody's trapped, then you have a right. false breakout. And then as violently as it went up, it goes back down. So okay, so we could still have that uh, acceleration blow off here. Ah, melt yeah. up. Yeah. Look, did okay. your, uh, do you have relatives asking you to buy uh, tech stocks yet? Uh, no, <laughs> I, I'm uh, looking for a top and NASDAQ up here. So that's why I'm looking at uh, some of these. I, I think that uh, uh, because I, I think rates, um, they handle higher rates less well yeah. than almost anything out there. Banks love them, but uh, uh, big mega cap tech does not. No. And the, oh man, it's such a slippery slope because I'm looking at those rates to, uh, to increase, but it, it's uh, everybody, I don't know. It's like uh, everyone's looking for that, aren't they? So I, I'm wondering, are we contrarian now wanting the rates to go up or thinking they're going to go up or this, this could drag on for, for another year, two years, three years before the, the, they can't even go up, you know? Yeah. What tempers me is if we do get uh, uh, some type of correction, 10% or so in the stock market, I actually think it'll be 30. But uh, if we get that, um, that's not going to, equate to higher yields yields will come back down so um the dow hasn't made a new high since last week it's one of the few but i know people looking for 35 9 or something like that uh, before it puts in the top but i i mean look at how long this advance has been going on patrick Do you, doesn't it feel like we're you know oh <laughs> yeah oh you <laughs> you're taking us back to the early 1900s oh yeah Okay, well, I this I just wanted to show that this is the parabolic melt up it had in uh, 2028, 2029. And right now, this one to blow off top, and then corrected yeah. the down down the the channel. I'm just going to yeah. put a uh, angle Close trend up. line. Yeah, and we could. Uh, what happened to my line? Okay, here. But the, the, the thing is, I always forget, and people forget, th these are indexes, right? So the weaker stocks, they, they rotate it out, they, right? Yeah, yeah they threw them out, especially in the Dow. So it, it's kind of skewed. It's like a bullish bias. It's like it's a trading program in itself, right? Like the rotating type of uh, trading systems where every month you take out the weakest sectors and you put in the stronger ones. Uh, Here you see, look, blow off top, hit the bottom of the rail. So this is a beautiful, beautiful channel that we've had for, for forever, right? And you can even here, look, there's a, I could probably draw one very close to here. So I, I'm expecting a blow off top through that upper channel here. So maybe this year, something that is really yeah. gonna trap a lot of people and then a pull back to at least retest this uh, this median line here. Okay. But nominally- so blow, these, Still blow off territory uh, we're in, <laughs> melt up territory. Maybe I that's how so. it has to end. Yeah, it, it could definitely uh, go go a little crazier there until the, this comes up uh, above. The, the markets they love doing that, like just exaggerate, seep through important resistance, important an important line. But by the end of by the end of the year or the, the following year, it says, "Hey, something's wrong," and then it closes back below. Uh, people they they want to take profits, etc. And then it could be just a cascade of events that bring it down until this this bottom line here. But nominally, they'll. The numbers, it might go on forever. Like if you don't adjust this for inflation, 
uh, in 10, 20, 30 years, we're going to be at a hundred thousand Dow, uh, you know, at, it's yeah. going to go, the numbers don't mean anything practically as you go forward. Right. It's, if you don't measure it in your purchasing power or in a, uh, like, let's say you have to divide it by gold or divide it by silver to, uh, to measure it into something more meaningful. Okay. Is this a Bitcoin break we're getting today, uh, the Ooh. beginning of something, or just a little uh, correction after a great move from 30,000? Let's check. Uh, yeah, I see it's correcting today a little bit. Yeah, so it's always tough once you've had a, 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 a strong top where you were stretched away from that moving average and then everybody's yeah. sold into you have a base information, and when you try to regain these higher levels, there now people you're running into uh, overhead resistance. Yeah, supply there. Yeah, that's it exactly. So the, all that 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 supply. So you have to grind through that. The easy part was going through the 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 fast fall. You could see here in the volume. So this is all the transactions for this price action, creating a nice yeah. base. But it went down so fast that there's like a vacuum here. Not many people uh, bought on the way down. So as it goes back up. There's not many sellers here. So this was the easy part, getting up to here. And if you could get through this congestion area here, you have another vacuum all the way to 56,000 right here. I call these uh, yeah. volume-defined uh, walls. So if you forget the price action and you just look, let's say I close that and I remove this, this, remove that, your game plan could just be essentially... Um, playing these, uh, these these volume these volume walls right. As soon as you start sliding up above this one, then your next target is this area here. If you if you pass through that, then you know I call it, it's like a thin zone, a vacuum here. Then you zoom up all the way to fifty six thousand. So you gotta keep a close eye. And right now, it's uh, if you can't make it here, same thing on the way back down. Then there's a vacuum on the way back down. Not many uh, people are willing to buy here, and it's gonna come and retest the top the okay. top of that box right here. Hey, where's my box? I if you could make it here, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> New York, New York. <laughs> um, okay. How about a, uh, you know, uh, also oil, Patrick, has been uh, two-sided trading. I, you know, looked like we had a breakdown under 65. <laughs> you know, that little double bottom it took out, now it's back above it. Uh, what do you do with the market like that? You see what I'm talking about? We had that little double bottom at 65 yeah. and then um, not going back that far, but you know, uh, now we're back above it. Uh, it looks bullish to you as well. Uh, oil, oil, oddly. it's that's why it's 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 uh, it, it if you you have to always zoom out because if you're too close, one, two, three, this is the fourth touch of the, this breakout line, so this is kind of yeah. a uh. And now it's trapped in what I call a bullish transition zone. So one, two, three, four. And now on this breakout here, it retested yep. it. Bullish yep. trans above inclining one and three. So what's just happening right here, it's just a um, consolidating. It's consolidating. Gains. It, yeah. It, it's letting those moving averages catch up, I think, here, Dale. And yeah. uh, if it doesn't, it could even go retest even that breakout line and the this and that would still be bullish right above the inclining three or moving average or it's starting to turn up so it could it could stay here for a while two three four five months just consolidate here as long as it doesn't close too long below the one year or at all you know because in the bull market you want it to stay healthy like this or it could even like do this type of scenario here come and retest at three year then you have a beautiful beautiful launching pad to break out finally of this this is the thing that traps everybody. It's every time there's a violent move. And even I, I found that trap. I think, oh, this is it. This is the move that's going to break out above these huge patterns. But what of, often happens more, more often than not, it, it needs it needs time. It needs yeah, to time. go here. Yeah. Then right. after that, needs to do a higher low right here. Yeah. And then, you know, how it zigzags a little bit. And then when nobody wants it and it's coiled close to that breakout yeah. line, this is this is when the move happens. So it has to move sideways to build up compression for the move. It, it would be super healthy. Look, this yeah. is like since 2008, man. So if ever we break out of this move, uh, Dale, that's yeah. some crazy inflation we're having. That's higher yields. These are all the higher yields, higher inflation uh, crew there, which uh, I, I'm angling that eventually this pattern 
is gonna is begging to, to have a, a breakout to the upside. Yeah, but uh, we have to be patient there. This is do you uh, do you track uranium? Last year, I started oh. talking to more and more people that were paying attention to uranium stocks. Uh, you know, it's part of the Green Deal, even though you know you could have uh, the China syndrome. So um, uranium's yeah, looks looks pretty good. Just a little pullback here to support. Exactly. All right. Okay. These are the uh, uranium ETF. Oh, hold Exposed. it. Let me get my Geiger counter. <laughs> I should put this green background. It's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are, uh, DJ, what are CCY pairs? What are those? Uh, are you talking about the WAN? Oh, currency pairs. Okay. Yeah, I look at Any currencies all the time there, like especially... Yeah. The, the odd USD that's critical for the inflation or bull market cycle for yeah, uh, it's China too, right? True, Aussie, yeah, copper, everything. Well, so uh, yeah, we've had a nice little pullback. Uh, do you think it's over? I, I know some guys looking for about sixty six long term. Um, that probably would equate to what you have on the left side of the low. Um, maybe for a right shoulder or something like right that, 66. Six. Yeah, well, and then look to yeah. the left and it looks like it was about 67. It's yeah. Because this could still be bullish, right? Building a flag. Yeah. As long as it's above this critical breakout line, there's yeah. like day traders are going to be scared out of their mind. Well, what do you mean? I'm going down to 66. But as a position trader, uh, as long as you don't make a new lower low, oh, yeah. this is, this is perfectly not. bullish. And look, there's a three-year moving average we could have these type of wicks, you know, below below that three year, but I wouldn't expect it yeah. to close any a wick down here, man. That, that would be an insane buying opportunity there. Okay, all right, I like it. So, uh, what's the best way for people besides? Uh, well, okay, on Twitter too at Bad Charts One, and um, your website, please. It's uh, you know the yeah. best way for people to follow you. There you go. Yeah, northstarbadcharts.com, guys, with uh, with uh, Kevin Wadsworth there, North Star yeah. Charts. And uh, we cover pretty much everything, taking requests. Even here, I just did this nickel chart. Uh, that's why all these, I'm looking at all these commodities, and uh, either they, 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 they have a little bit of time to do it, like a type of blow off top. But after that, I, I, f I feel like uh, the pullback, what we've been seeing in the currencies, et cetera, it could be some type of uh, some reset there and as uh, maybe inflation expectations, they, they kind of uh, get subdued a little bit. In reality, maybe sinks in more. And then, uh, yeah, we got to- uh, Maybe that, what we're getting that now, a little bit of uh, a pause in the inflation scare well, now before it reasserts itself. Look, could that be happening? I think so. Look, With like look copper down, you yeah. know, it rebounded recently, but- uh, you know, uh, Aussie down that maybe we're in this uh, this period of it pulling back. Yeah, copper came back pretty good. Um, and but it, it still may not be ready to blow. No, exactly. Think? Could you, look, it co needs copper time. Is, it's done legendary runs and look at these halfway pullbacks. Like yeah. did this do this? This could be sufficient. Maybe one more month. And, and yeah. gold kind of led the way. I think when gold restarts going up. It's going to help. Gold broke out first in 2019. And after that, yeah. all the commodities had their turn. So as these commodities cool down and gold gets ready to go up, after gold breaks out to all-time highs, then That's I think they're, they're going to finish their uh, their pullbacks, The all these okay. commodities. Gold, lead, gold leads everything, yeah. in your opinion. All right. Uh, yeah. That's all the nice time, setup. every time. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, he who owns the most gold rules. So... Uh, Gold leads, you know, I'm looking to maybe buy a pullback at 1740, 1750 in gold if it if that happens. Any any thoughts on this virtual Jackson Hole meeting? No, Patrick. No, no all noise. I, I, yeah. All right. So you know, I, I usually put up a Johnny Lang song on Fed Days. Uh, title of the song is "Lie to Me, Tell Me Everything's Okay." So. Um, Appreciate you being here, uh, Patrick, very much. And uh, guys, uh, the, I think that Patrick and Kevin uh, produce some of the most interesting looks and charts uh, using arcs and circles and things that uh, I never even considered using. 
and uh, they're a, a definite follow. Uh, do you have any kind of trial <clears throat> that listeners could take advantage of for a week or a month where they could check out your work? Well, or no. Yeah. Honestly, m- m- most of the, my big picture charts, the techniques we, we put there, they're all free on Twitter. Okay. Uh, on the website, it's more like the uh, we have a signal links like uh, for the, the, the trading system for stocks that we really track uh, for maybe swing traders or fa- faster term traders. We even have a gamblers pick section where it's, it's stocks there that are hitting, let's say, the right hemisphere of the arc for the first time and nobody wants them. Companies oh. like that don't, that don't even have like mining permits, but we like okay. as we don't even care. We just look at the low risk, uh, high reward, and all those all, all those are on, on the website there. Are you are you doing altcoins in the same fashion? Everything, yeah. You so, do everything. Uh, I, yeah. I don't know. Ke- Kevin's do covering. Do let's How say, do you do uh, everything? Here, like he did IOTA. He did. Uh, he yeah. does podcast covering 20, 30 uh, cryptos in one shot. Polka dot. Yeah. Yeah. All, all these. Uh, yeah. If, if there's an arc like this one here, I don't yeah. want to drag on too long, but. The, these are the type of opportunities. Not here, guys. Arcs at the end. It's the end of it. That's the target's reached. You want to get in on these bounces here, right? Yeah. Interesting. So uh, bad charts because they're not bad. <laughs> they're good bad charts. Bad chart ones. Patrick Kareem, thank you, my trading more, your brother, for thank being you. with us today. If gold oh, was a James Bond movie. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, man. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Patrick, for uh, dropping in. I'll get a hold of you on Twitter and uh, really appreciate your work and Kevin's work. Uh, I think you do a great job for the FinTwit community. Thanks thank again, bro. Thank you, sir. Take care, guys. All right. Patrick Kareem, follow his arc, follow his circles, and I'll see everyone for TGIF tomorrow. Good hunting uh, with the the virtual Jackson hole in the wall conference. And remember, don't just count your arcs or your circles or your trend lines or your crypto or your silver coins that you're stacking or your bars, count your blessings and we'll see everyone tomorrow. Adios, Uh, people are thanking you. They're saying nice analysis, Patrick. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Good job once again. You, you never fail to, uh, you know, open people's eyes to new ways, of, new ways of looking at charts, Patrick. Thank you very much. Thank you. Adios. Bye.